What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie with ElevateYourself.org. Welcome to my Volleyball Coach Reaction to Q Season 1, Episode 18. If you're new to this channel, I'm a volleyball coach, volleyball player, and personal trainer that provides volleyball tutorials, jump training videos, and other volleyball content, which you can find linked below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for more content. We finally hit 150 members for my Patreon, so I will announce the winner of our lightweight hoodie and elevate lanyard giveaway at the end of this video, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Also, if you've been enjoying my videos and want to support Elevate Yourself, you can sign up for my Patreon linked below, where you will also receive access to exclusive content like my private blog, live Q&A sessions, monthly podcasts, behind-the-scenes footage, and more. I did not realize that the he in Hinata and Asahi are the same, where Asahi means morning sun. That makes the scene from the last episode even more poetic, where Hinata and Asahi both revel in seeing the horizon over the block. I swear they started writing this anime 100 years ago based on the complexity. Now you guys know the key to becoming a dominant blocker. I wonder if Aone does any eyebrow exercises. Speaking of having no eyebrows, I'm willing to do this to celebrate 1,000 Patreon members, but it has to be during the summer because it would not be a good look for a high school teacher. Thanks for sharing about why Kenma is referred to as Pudding Head. When I looked at the picture, it actually looks like a dish I would love to try someday. Although instead of thinking of the flavors first, I'll probably think of Kenma. I appreciate your feedback about the background music. I'll also try to look for other types of background music just to change it up every couple episodes. But the hard part is that some songs may not actually trick the copyright bot, so we'll just have to see. I'll probably find 3-4 to four good songs and then rotate them every episode. Kageyama's impressive backcourt toss was something that he can do all the time, but earning a smile from him is much more rare, which is why that stood out to me more. I know many of our gyms are still closed due to COVID-19 and it's been hard to keep up your training. This is why I've decided to teach an online bodyweight jump camp, which is a four week jump training class that starts on January 6th, 2021, where I will train you personally through Zoom video conference each week. This training camp includes bodyweight only exercises so you can train right in the comfort of your home. Make sure you sign up below so you can start increasing your vertical jump for the new year. Now let's get this high Q party started. Chensporu! Ooh, reverse outside set. Yeah, nice, nice swing, Tanaka. Nice kid. Got to practice my my Japanese English. That's a close game. Ooh, good soft touch, Hinata. Oh, transition. A C quick is a back a back quick set. They're starting to read him a little bit better. Tracking his patterns. Up five points. That's a pretty big lead, but I've seen teams come back before. Man, that image of Hinata in the sun never gets old. Great back set hand technique. Good absorption from Daichi. You see how he kind of falls back and brings his platform back. Ooh, Hinata's demanding it, but he fakes it out. Come on, put it away, Asahi. Ooh. So awesome that Asahi is the one that puts away the game point. Wow. Are they playing best of five or best of three? 
I think I remember you guys telling me last time in a previous episode that they played best of five at a tournament, which is pretty brutal when you got to play multiple five best of five matches in a single day. Yeah, anything can happen. Just because you're up two doesn't guarantee you're gonna gonna win. Good teams will never give up. Alright, I gotta stop it so I can see what their game plan is. In volleyball, this is what we call rotation number two. So there's six rotations, right? Every player has to rotate all the way through the court. But in each rotation, you get some advantages and some disadvantages based on which player is starting in the front row or back row, in the center, in the left, or in the right. So you see how Kageyama is starting in the middle back, and that's called rotation number two. That means Asahi gets to start left front. The only reason why I think they are starting in this rotation is because Asahi is starting left front, which means he's going to get the most hitting opportunities in the beginning of the game. And if he's been hitting well in the first and second set, that's a really good choice because you want to get an early start with your best hitter. This also might mean that Tanaka might be their best server, which is why they want to start him first. So I'm curious what their strategy is. Okay, so yeah, they originally they had Hinata matched up with Aone, which was difficult for Hinata to score points. So they're gonna, looks like they're gonna shift him over so that he's not matched up and so that will free up Hinata to hit up against maybe a weaker middle blocker. But if they've been winning in the first two sets, I don't know if you want to change it. Sometimes coaches can outcoach themselves. There you go, he is embracing the role of the ace. Hell yeah! This is great team commitment. You see how everyone's talking like, I'm gonna be the best for the team, I'm gonna be the best for you. That's a, a great attitude to have. And that's why volleyball is the ultimate team sport. Date ko, go, go, let's go, 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 date ko. Oh yeah, Tsuki, that means Tsuki is matched up with Aune. But, you know, Tsuki is a smart middle. Going back to the previous episode with Tsuki, when he asked for Kageyama to set him a little further off the net, that's a great strategy because the closer you get to the net, the more downward you can hit, so it looks more impressive, but the easier it is for the blocker to slow down the ball because you're just closer to the blocker. When your set is further off the net, you can hit deeper angles, which is not only harder to dig because now the defenders have to cover more court, but now you have a higher chance of avoiding the blockers. So this strategy might work out better, but I'm still not a fan of changing things, especially when things are going well. So I'm really curious to see if this change is going to give them an even bigger advantage or if it's going to mess up their rhythm. And Suki just needs to start making comments to Aone and get in his head. <laughs> it's his trying to steal spot. Stupid Suki, why is he trying to bring doubt into Asahi's head? Man, Dantiko's coach looks really cool. Ooh, great swing down the line. Cocky problem children. Oh, this is a good matchup. Oh, got faked out again. 
Yeah, but then he was able to change direction quickly. He's finally starting to adjust. Nice to receive it. Never gets old. Ooh, triple block. They read it. Yeah, they need Hinata to, to fake out Aone to, to free everyone up. Alright, let's see how Hinata's going to do in the front row. Ooh, the middle got a good dig. Oh, he's there, that's that. Quick transition. Okay, this is our chance to really milk Hinata because this is a good matchup. Speaking of matchups, I just made a tutorial video on this specifically for setters and how to make good setting decisions. And one of them is identifying those matchups. So make sure you guys watch that because I go into detail about the importance of identifying these type of matchups. So here, we know that the middle blocker is not fast enough to block Hinata and then quickly transition to block somebody else. So Kageyama knows that, and he knows that the only way they can stop Hinata is to fully commit block, which means they're always going to leave other hitters alone, either against no blockers or against one blocker. Compared to the previous two sets where Aone was able to focus on Hinata, but also still transition out to slow down or maybe block some of the other hitters. But the gamble is, when Hinata's front row, you're going to get a lot of points from that run. But then the other half of the time when Hinata's in the back row, you give Aone an advantage because now he doesn't have to worry about Hinata and he can really focus on slowing down and blocking the other players. So we'll see if this trade-off pays off for this set. Ooh, that's a that's an anxious timeout. 10 to 12. Still very close. びっくりそこのびっくり感がまだ持続してるって感じですかね。でも時間が経てばそれも薄れていく。もしもこのセット伊達光が取って三セット目にもつれ込めば、カラスノは一気に不利になる。カラスノは一気に不利になる。カラス
What's Asahi thinking? He better be thinking, give me the ball again, because I'm going to destroy it. Oh, making eye contact. There you go. Oh, good swing. He's kept it high. Hey, okay, didn't get blocked down, though. Ooh. Back, right back at you. Ooh. They came back with a block, a taste of their own medicine. They work together. Good job, Suki. So that means now that they're able to side out, I think maybe Hinata's going to come to the front row. Oh yeah, okay. So the coaches were talking about how they just needed to get out of this rotation. Because in volleyball, you stay in the same rotation. If you keep winning points, that means you keep serving until the other team can earn a point, and then you rotate. So they finally rotated out, which means Aune is off the court and Hinata is on the court. And the score is 18-18, which means you get to end the game in your best rotation. And the best rotation for Karasuno has been Hinata matched up against their less skilled middle blocker which means Hinata is going to score a lot of easy points with his quick, but also open it up for the other hitters because Aone is no longer in the front row. So let's see if Karasuno capitalizes on these last three rotations where Hinata is in the front row. This is so tense. Oh, good dig. Come on, set the back row. Oh, they're going to do a crazy quick. Boom, that's right. They can't even react, especially when no eyebrows is not up there. Ooh, but they're still going back and forth. Man, that Daktiko. Look at those water bottles. They're using water bottles to cheer. That's awesome. Good soft block. Oh, demanding it and he's the decoy and it's the easy crush that's right you cannot leave Asahi one-on-one -on -one. with that man bun power he's gonna destroy it against one blocker oh. good break of the platform absorbing that force by Nishinoya they're probably gonna end it on a, a, cr a really great kill by Asahi to fully redeem himself Hmm. That's right, come on. Ooh. He did a late read. That's right, come on, Asahi. Keep your spirits up. So they've already rotated three times, now Aone is back in the front row. Man, this is so tense. Oh, lucky kill. But he read that so well. Hey, sometimes you get lucky. Better to be lucky than good sometimes. I love how Datiko is also trying to pump themselves up. And even Aone is getting discouraged, but he needs his team to, to support him. Uh-oh. So this is not a good situation for Karasuno because now Aune is in the front and Hinata's in the back. So they've lost that offensive edge and now Datako has that defensive edge. Knowing how poetic this anime is, I'm going to put my money on Asahi getting a triple block in front of him. Having flashbacks of the previous time where he felt like he lost the game for the team. But now he's just going to crush it through the block. He's going to hit through the block so hard. They're going to have an awesome animation where the, the ball is going to compress in the floor again. And that's going to be Asahi's redemption. I'm going to put my money on that's going to happen. So against the worst situation possible, they are going to succeed. Oh, no. <laughs> Not a... Oh, yeah, there you go. Kagiyama. Let him have it. <laughs> 
too much pressure. Ooh. And the music is starting to get more intense, like a, a positive intense. Some good bench talk. Yes. At least you have Asahi. Let's go, man bun. Ah, of course they cut to halftime during the most intense times. <laughs> good job, Suga. That's right, he just missed a serve. And he can't even make it in, in no pressure. Nice to receive it. Easy dig by Daitiko. Oh, nice dig. Here we go, come on. You gotta finish the game, Asahi. Redemption time. Tool it. Oh, Nishino is gonna cover it, come on. Let's go, one handed dig. Ooh, man. Amazing. We got to go back and talk about that after this because this is way too intense. One more. Demand it. But Suga's not there to set him. Oh, wipe it. Wipe it. Joust. Oh, come on. Thick body. Use that strength. Oh, man. He won the Joust. No way. Is Nishinoida going to cover it? But he's just got. Oh, shoot! The sliding kick. Oh, man, that was sick. That happens. That happens. Especially for the South American teams that are amazing at volleyball. Uh, soccer, sorry. Let's go. Put everything he got. This is, this is exactly how it feels to. He's okay, so he's coming back to get ready to to hit. He's loading. Send him again. Yes. Demand it. Mm -hmm. Give him some space to work with and time so he can jump high and hit over the block and swing at his highest point. Asahi, compress the ball. I just want to see it. I want to see that ball compression. In the eye. Oh man, that image. The sunrise coming through the iron wall. The two off the block. Oh man, where is it going? Oh, just outside of his reach. Yes, Asahi did it. No ball compression, but they won. Whoa. My heart is racing. I, like my voice is shaking right now. That was so intense. I'm not lying, man. Oh, that was such an intense moment. And then Asahi's yell. Oh, I've done that so many times. The relief, the elation. There you go, Anune. Look at that sportsmanship. I have no eyebrows, but I will congratulate you. That's respect. Yeah. <laughs> He's so cute. He's embracing it. And Nishinoya covered every ball. Uh, I feel. I actually feel bad for Aone. 
But he, he worked his butt off. I remember you guys saying they tend to stop playing if they're not going to play professionally just to focus on their exams, their college exams. Wow, Aune is not even an upper class, he's not even a senior. I thought he was a senior. That's a couple more years of his Iron Wall dominance. This guy must be the captain. It's always nice to have supporters from your own school. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good three. When you when you've started in the program and you've gone through a lot of the same battles with the same people, that's a special bond. So he positioned Asahi to have to deal with Aone all three times to give him opportunities to, to work through it. Single-handedly beat him. Mm -hmm. Even if you get blocked, the setter will keep setting you if he believes in you. That's true, they didn't call any plays beforehand. <laughs> I can definitely see why you guys like Suki. He just kind of just slides in out of nowhere and makes irritating comments for people. Not my cup of tea, but I can see where you guys are coming from. Yeah, that's tough, especially when you've been in the program for a while. You wish you could be on the court to experience that with everyone else. But he was just as engaged from the sidelines, and, and that's, that's a great leader there. And I bet Suga's going to have to come in at a critical moment in the future. <laughs> People are talking. Uh, I'm just as annoyed as, as, as Karasuno with K-pop's girl, girl band fan group. Unless they're playing them next, that would be exciting. Here's my reaction to episode 18. I thought the last episode was intense. My heart was racing to the point where I felt like if I was going to say something, it would crack or I wouldn't be able to say anything at all because I was just so in the moment and felt all the emotions of all the characters, especially Asahi, were just that, that relief. And we already felt that in practice when he was calling Suga's name and he, that was his first small chance of redemption and gave himself a little bit of hope that hey maybe I can be the ace again but to do it in this context 
where the game is on the line, he just got blocked the previous play, and then in the same rally, he got blocked again. And just like Nishinoya said, he was going to cover him and empower him to swing as many times as he needed to score the point. And I want to reference something that Nishinoya said to Asahi a couple episodes ago. He wasn't as concerned that Asahi got blocked and lost the point. He was more concerned that he lost the will to try. And really that's all you can ask of your teammates is for them to do their best and try their hardest all the time. But the moment they give up or the moment they don't work the hardest, that's the worst thing you can do to a teammate, especially if they are working hard for you. I was hoping Suga would be on the team so he can yell Suga again, but it was great to see Suga get involved and demand the play from the sideline, telling Kageyama, set this guy again because he can do it and he needs to do it. I was right about how the scene turned out, but I was wrong about the ball compression. I think if the animators did that again, it would just be a repeat, and the way that the ball dribbled along the net was definitely a lot more suspenseful. So, <laughs> good job animators. I was also wrong about why Coach Ukai shifted the rotation of his team. If I'm understanding what Ukai said earlier, he was trying to position Asahi to be matched up against Aune's blocker in all three rotations. So that means Asahi would have to hit against Aune every single time. And that would force Asahi to have to figure out how to work through a difficult blocker like Aune. That's another sign of a good coach because he's not afraid to let his players fail and let them figure out on their own how to get themselves out of difficult situations. As a coach, in general, you do want to position your players for success, like positioning Hinata against their less experienced blocker so Hinata would have more opportunities to score. But you also want to purposely put your players in difficult situations sometimes because that's the only way that they're going to grow. And notice he did that with a player that already had a lot of skill and experience and was ready for that next level push. I love how this anime also goes into the conversations from the opposing team. And even though Karasuno is the main team of Haikyuu, you also get to see the other team's perspective and the discouragement of Datiko. This whole time we saw Datiko as this robotic team that all they do is dominate and block and stare you down. And even Aune got discouraged in the middle of the game and at the end of the game. So that was really cool to see that at the end of the day, we're all human and we all experience the same emotions and are motivated by the same things. Another scene that stuck out to me was when Asahi was about to spike and you saw his reflection in someone's eye and it was very fitting that that eye was from Nishinoya. Almost like Asahi was performing and jumping from Nishinoya's support and he's always there to catch him. And let me tell you, having a good libero that is not just good at passing but mentally committed to supporting every one of his teammates on the floor is such a freeing feeling. When I play with Brandt, who's the libero from The Tall Ones, I love playing with him because I feel free to just focus on my offense, my blocking. Because Brandt is such an aggressive passer, he wants to cover a lot of court to free everyone else up to do their job. He's also very vocal and very encouraging and very fiery after every point, which is why I love playing with Brandt. Now it's time to announce the winner of our next giveaway. I've entered 157 names from all of our Patreon members. So let's see who wins. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Who's gonna win? Ooh, Leandro Boisclair. Congratulations for winning the Elevate Lightweight Hoodie and Lanyard. I want to thank all the Patreon members again for supporting Elevate Yourself. It really means a lot to me and it's been really fun interacting with all of you on Patreon. Make sure you stay tuned for the next episode where I'll announce the next giveaway when we hit 200 members on my Patreon. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.